we're looking again the book of Hebrews chapter 12 verses 1 and to verses 3 and just as you are turning just by way of introduction let me share with you a little bit of a humor there was a, a blind man and he had a seeing uh, seen eye dog at the side and he walks into a grocery store and the man walks to the middle of the store and he picks up the dog by the tail and starts swinging the dog in circles over his head so the store manager just seeing all of this thinks that this is really quite strange so he decides to find out what is going on so the store manager approaches the blind man swinging the dog and says pardon me may i help you with something the blind man says no thanks i'm just looking around well, I want to invite you to look with me tonight in the reading of God's Word. Let's all read it together now. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 to verses 3. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a call of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest he be weary and faint in your minds. Focus in on the finisher as we are continuing. Would you just bow with me in prayer? Heavenly Father, we are thankful that we can gather, dear Lord, for this evening's broadcast and the message can and go, Lord, to the people. Uh, wherever they are tonight, we thank you, dear Father, for your precious, precious word. And uh, we thank you, dear Lord, uh, for the anointing now that is uh, flowing, dear, dear Father, from here uh, to the people. Bless, dear Lord, we pray tonight in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, focusing on the finish up, the importance of focus. I want to begin with that. Why is it important to focus? Well, when the Alaskan pipeline was being built, there were many Texans who went to Alaska and found work on the pipeline. But the Texans could only work a few hours in the weather. It was, I mean, that cold. Um, yet the Eskimos, the native Alaskans, could work indefinitely in the cold. So they decided to study this. Why it was so? To find out why the Eskimos could withstand the weather. So after much study, they found out that there was no physiological differences between the Eskimos and the Texans. There was nothing in skin thickness and blood or anything physically that would explain the differences in the ability to withstand the rigid temperatures. So the solution came when they did a psychological study. You see, the difference was the Eskimo said he knows it was cold but had to get the job done. In other words, his focus was on the job and obtaining results rather on the weather. The Texan focused on the weather and this kept him from focusing on the job. That is how important that focus is. It will determine whether you succeed or whether you fail, whether you go on or you are left behind, whether you live a mediocre life or whether you live a, a life that is truly pleasing to the Lord. So, when you focus tonight is important. So, what are you focusing on? You can be focusing right now on the bad things that is happening. You can be focusing on the trials and the temptations that you are facing, or you can focus on Christ, and you can focus on His Word. As you focus on Christ, who is our e e example, you will find your, yourself living victorious. You will find uh, yourself in a place of divine favor. So whatever are your troubles tonight, whatever your challenge is tonight, things might probably seem impossible right, right now. But with God, nothing is impossible as we focus on Jesus. Now remember, in the very beginning, I was telling you that our text tells us uh, why it's important to fix on Christ uh, because of who he is, uh, one, and secondly, on because of what Christ did. So the first thing that we learned here in our, the passage of scripture 
that Jesus is not only the finisher of our faith, but he is the author of our faith. Verses 2, looking on to Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith. As I look at the word author, I found out many things. I found that it also means that Jesus is the champion of our faith. In other words, he has already blazed the trail for us. Praise God. That is so wonderful. He went before us. He cleared the way. Praise God that we might make it to God. He cleared the pathway so that we can overcome sin. He cleared the road so that we might overcome temptation. Because Jesus faced all those things in his earthly life. And you can see that how he dealt with it and how he cleared the way for us. That we might live victoriously. That we too might be champions for Christ. No wonder why the word tells us that we are overcomers and more than overcomers. Because of him who loves us. Romans chapter 8. The Greek word author comes from the word archivos. And so it means chief leader. Jesus is our chief. Chief leader. The one who takes the lead. The one who sets the example. I am so glad that Jesus is my chief leader. I am so glad because he will never, never lead me astray. I am so glad that he is my leader because he will never disappoint me. I am so glad that Jesus is my chief because he will never forsake me. Jesus is the mighty conqueror. He conquered the grave. He conquered death. He conquered Satan. He conquered hell. Jesus is also a soon and coming king. Now, Brothers and sisters and listeners tonight, um, Jesus is the original author of all that is good. Praise God. This is who Jesus is. Uh, he's not only the creator of the universe, uh, but he is the original creator of man. He is the original creator of the animal kingdom. He is the original creator of the birds, uh, and of the fishes, uh, of the fruit trees. He is the original creator of the stars and the moon, the heavens and the earth itself. The book of Colossians chapter 1 verses 16 through verses 17 says, For by him were all things created that are in heaven, that are in the earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Verse 17 says, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. This is Jesus, the author. Praise God. Hallelujah. This is Jesus, the chief leader, the original one. Now, when you think about what Christ created, when you think about what Jesus created the universe. It is so vast. It is so amazing. Space itself is so vast that astronomers had, de had devised a way to be able to, to, to measure it. And so they devised special units to keep their figures manageable. So their basic unit of distance is called, you might guess it, the light year. Now I want to show you tonight who, how mighty Christ is, the author. I don't want to show you tonight uh, how great that he is. And when you think this evening about what you are going through, folks, um, you know that you can trust in God and you can depend on him because uh, he is so great. Uh, so the distance light travels in one year, get this, uh, is about six trillion miles. Could you imagine those figures? This is six followed by 12 zeros. Our nearest star, Alpha Centauri, is so far away that if one traveled at 30,000 miles per hour, it will take 100,000 years to reach it. Wow, that is so incredible. 
according to astronomers, uh, there are more than one billion stars in our own galaxy. And there are approximately 170 billion uh, galaxies to 2 trillion galaxies. And that is just an estimate, uh, my friends. Who created all these galaxies? Who created all these stars? The original creator, Jesus Christ. He is uh, the author, praise God. Each uh, of all of those stars, they have different characteristics. In other words, no, no two stars are the same. Wow. This is really amazing, praise God. It's just like God created all of us, and we have about seven uh, billion plus persons upon planet Earth, and yet no two persons are the same. Even identical twins uh, are not the same. There are differences, folks. Uh, pray, they even tell us that even no two blades of grass is the same. It's not awesome, praise God. Who created all of this? Who created diversity, folks? Uh, it is Jesus. He is the author, praise God. It, on its annual journey around the sun, the earth travels about 67,000 miles per hour. And if you ever wondered why your head sometimes spin, well, maybe that is the reason. The earth continues to spin as it goes around the sun. The Bible tells us that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. This is my Jesus, praise God. We just read the text. He created all things. Everything that you see in existence today, whether near, whether far, it is Christ that created all these things. Several years ago, a scientist wrote an article entitled, Seven Reasons Why I Believe in God. And this is so good, I thought that I'll share it with you tonight. As we are looking at Jesus, who is the author of everything, praise God. And so, number one, he says, consider the rotation of the earth itself. Our globe spins on an axis at the rate of 1,000 miles, and it is just a hundred. Um, it, 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 it is just a hundred miles an hour. Our days and our nights could be uh, would be ten times as long. Just imagine that. If it were to, to, be, to, to be spinning a little bit longer, then what will happen upon planet Earth? It will affect planet Earth. Just imagine, we just have 12 hour day, 12 hour night. Our nights will be prolonged out 10 times as much. What will happen to the vegetation life? He said, it will freeze. With 10, 10 nights, it would, it would freeze. So you see, folks, that how accurate our God made. Now, people say that this is by accident. Evolution, folks. Uh, folks, this could never, never be. Could never be by chance. All these things are happening, folks. Um, he says, consider, secondly, the heat of the sun to a thousand degrees at surface temperature. And we are just far enough away to be blessed by the terrible heat. He says, if the sun gave off half of its radiation, we will freeze to death. And if it gave off more than half, then we will be fried. That is amazing. So the exact distance that God placed the earth from the sun, and it has remained there ever since that God made it. It has not shifted, it has not moved for all these years, folks. It is still in its place. Um, it is Christ. It is Jesus. Uh, he made all things. He upholds all things. And in other words, he did not only make it, he maintains it, praise God. Up to today, who is maintaining this universe? Uh, it is Jesus Christ. I know you are praising God and you're lifting your hand and you are jumping up tonight. Glory to God and just hearing these things. Uh, the scientists continue to say, the third, they consider the 23 degree slant of the earth. If it were different than that, the vapors of the ocean will rise over the continents and there will be absolutely no light. He said, fourthly, consider the moon. If the moon were 50,000 miles away rather than its present di distance, twice each day, giant tides would inundate every bit of land mass upon the face of the earth. Praise God, hallelujah. But folks, Jesus has placed not only the sun, 
in a specific distance of the earth, but the moon is also at a specific distance, glory to God, that control the tides upon planet earth so that it would not overcome the earth, praise God. That is my Jesus. How could you, I cannot understand folks, how people could say that still with all this uh, that there is no God. It is, it is only by chance. Um, folks, that just falls apart. Uh, God is the one who creates it and God is the one who is sustaining it. Uh, 50 says, consider the crust of the earth. Uh, just a little bit thicker and there could be no life because there would be absolutely no oxygen upon planet Earth. Sixthly, he said, consider the thinness of the atmosphere. If our atmosphere was just a little thinner, the millions of meteors now burning themselves out in space would plummet, to the, plummet this Earth into oblivion. Seventh, he said, finally, the fact that man is capable of grasping the idea of the existence of God in itself is sufficient evidence because who has put into the heart of man folks um, that listen creation testifies that there must be a creator it is the fact that, that God has done that he concluded by saying well, these are the reasons why I believe in God what about you tonight are these sufficient reasons? I believe that there are more than sufficient reasons for you to believe that there is a God. But still there are some people that are so misguided. There are people that call themselves atheists and they tell us that there is no such thing as a God. There is no such being as a God. There's a story about an atheist that was walking through the woods one day, admiring all of ever Lucian had created him, and suddenly he heard um, a rustling in the bushes behind him. So turning to look, he saw an eight-foot grizzly bear beginning to charge towards him. So he ran as fast as he could down the path. I looked over his shoulder, and he saw that the bear was rapidly closing in. So running faster yet, he looked again, and the bear was even closer. His heart now was pounding, was racing. He tried to run faster, but at last he tripped and he fell on the ground. So as he rolled over to pick up himself, um, the bear was right over him, reaching with its paw to strike him. And then the atheist cried out, first time in his life, God saved me. <laughs> well, time stopped. The bear froze. The forest became silent. Even the river stopped moving. And a brilliant light shone upon the man. And a thunderous voice came from the sky. And this is what the voice said. You have denied my existence for all these years. You taught others that I do not exist. And even uh, credit creation to some cosmic accident. Uh, now you expect me to help you from this bear? Well, I want to ask you, are you ready to be a Christian? Well, the atheist looked directly into the light and said, I will certainly think up about it, but could you make this bear a Christian? Well, very well, said God. The light went out, the river now ran, the sounds of the forest resumed, and the bear dropped down to his knees, brought his paws together, bowed his head, and he prayed, and the bear prayed this prayer, Lord, I thank you for this food which I am about to receive. <laughs> well, folks, as humorous as, as that is, uh, still some people don't believe that there is a, a God. But one day they are going to stand before that very God and give an account. What are they going to say? What are these non-believers going to say? What are those people going to say who have rejected the grace of God and who have rejected a Calvary, who have rejected the cross in which Jesus died, who have rejected the forgiveness of sin? What are they going to say when they stand before God? The Bible tells us that all judgment is committed unto Christ, praise God. He will be the final judge and he will make that final decision. I wonder what people will tell him when folks for all through their lives, they denied Christ. They denied that he is the savior of the world. They denied 
that he is the one and the only one that can forgive them of their sin. They have denied that he is the only way that to enter into the kingdom of God. Yes, our Bible teaches from our text that Jesus is the author of our faith. He is the champion of our faith. And because Jesus led the way, and because Jesus conquered everything that there was, every attack that the enemy threw against him, every weapon that the enemy hailed against him, Jesus conquered every one, every single one of them. He championed the faith so that we who believe in him, folks, that we can live as champions also, praise God. Sin does not have a to have the dominion over us. The power of sin has been broken because Jesus is the champion of our faith. And you as a believer in Christ, you can live a victorious Christian life. Praise God. Hallelujah. That is a wonderful glory to God. Jesus, being the champion of, of our faith, uh, has saved us from an eternal hell, uh, wrote our name in the Lamb's Book uh, of Life. Uh, praise God, hallelujah. And Jesus has taught us now how to live. He has taught us how we can walk uh, with God. Being the champion of our faith, uh, Jesus has taught us how to pray. Not just reciting words like the Pharisees did, uh, generation after generation, just mere words. But Jesus has really taught us how that we can connect with God. That how we can come to the throne of grace boldly and we can pray and we can obtain mercy. This is how Jesus taught us to pray. Praise God and to have an intimate relationship with God. He taught us how we can receive answers. He said that when we pray we must believe that we have received the things that we are praying for. And he says you will have whatsoever you ask. He taught us how that mountains can be removed. He said if you have faith in God, then you can say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea. And if you do not doubt in your heart, but you believe the things that you say, you shall have whatsoever is saved. So Jesus has taught us how to receive answers from God. Jesus went about and he healed the sick. Jesus cleansed the lepers. He opened the eyes of the blind and he opened deaf ears and the lame to walk and he raised the dead. Jesus fed thousands of people with just uh, a couple of fishes uh, and a chunk, loaves of bread. Uh, praise God. This is Jesus. He is the author, folks. Glory to God. Uh, he cannot only act, but Jesus can multiply. And that's what he did. Glory to God. He is the author of, of life uh, itself. Glory to God. And he is the one, brothers and sisters, uh, that love you enough to die for you and the sins of the entire world. There is none that can repair like Jesus, praise God. There is none like unto him, the Bible tells us. Fearful in, in praises, doing wonders. The mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. This is Jesus. He is the author of our faith, glory to God. Someone wrote that it's a great teaser. Talk for 40 years, Plato for 50, Aristotle for 40, and Jesus for only three years of his public ministry. But yet, look at the difference of the influence of Jesus in just a three year ministry transcends folks uh, combining all of these men put uh, together. Praise God. All the philosophers, glory to God, and all the intellectuals of the day fade in comparison to our Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, praise God. Um, Jesus, the Bible did not recall that Jesus painted uh, any paintings. Uh, and yet, folks, uh, you will see that some of the world's greatest paintings has been uh, about Jesus, praise God. Raphael, Michelangelo, 
Leonardo da Vinci, all received their inspiration from who? Jesus, who is the author. Praise God. In today's world, glory to God, more books have been written about Jesus than any single person in human history. Praise God. That is Jesus, the author of, and the finisher of our faith. Glory to God. Jesus wrote not poetry, but Dante, Milton, and scores of the world's greatest poets were all inspired by him. Today, folks, we have great composers, Handel, Beethoven, Bach, and many more. They are performing wonderful pieces, great hymns and symphonies. Glory to God in his praise, in his worship, in his honor. Glory to God. The only person, singer Emily, folks, has influenced this entire world from Adam to where it is unparalleled. It's Jesus of Nazareth, praise God. Hallelujah, glory to God. He is indeed the author, praise God. Jesus, folks, is the author of all good things, praise God. Rejoice in him. Tonight, Christ is a central figure of uh, our faith. Uh, and without him, folks, uh, there is no real faith at all. There is no foot uh, to stand on. Uh, there is no real foundation uh, to stand on. Uh, the only sure foundation is the author and finisher of our faith, uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, when you come to the end of your life, uh, make sure that you know that author. Make sure that you are standing on that firm foundation. Praise God. Hallelujah. Jesus indeed is the author. Glory to God. And so folks, as we are coming to a close before I, I lead in prayer today, glory to God. And we continue this wonderful series of messages. We will learn secondly that he's not only the author, but Jesus also is the Savior. Glory to God. There's so much that I could share with you about Jesus. My heart is, is overflowing, folks. And this is the message that we share with you tonight. It's not our own. It is about Christ. Hallelujah. Because Christ is everything. He is our all in all. The reason why we live, the reason why we breathe is because of, of this Jesus. Without Jesus, we are absolutely nothing. Without this Jesus, this world is without hope. Without Jesus, folks, you are without hope tonight. I want to encourage you to put your faith and trust in the author and finish the one that not only will start you off in your journey, but the one will also complete that journey. There are many people today might, might, might actually start you up in something also, but are they able to carry you through? That's the thing. Are they able to carry you through and to take you through to the very end? But I'm telling you folks uh, that Jesus can uh, and Jesus will. I love what the Apostle Paul says, one of my favorite verses. Uh, in the book of Philippians chapter 1 and verse 6, it says, He that began a good work in me will complete it, will perfect it until the day of Jesus Christ. Because why? He is my author. He started my faith, folks. Praise God. He's not going to let me hang it. And I'm saying to you, brother, I'm saying to you, sister, tonight, uh, Jesus who saved you, is that Jesus will keep you? That Jesus will carry you? Come and make your life. Uh, trials and temptations and tribulations may come. But be rest assured that Jesus, uh, praise God, who started you where you were, whether 10 years ago, 20 years ago, he will carry you through. Praise God. Amen. He will take you through glory to God and straight into the kingdom of our Savior. Bow with me in prayer, shall we? Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful message coming our way this evening about Jesus. He indeed is the author. Hallelujah. Praise God. Father, this theory of evolution cannot be supported at all. There are no concrete evidence. You always talk about maybe, perhaps, they're guessing, guessing, trying to come up with something to prove their theory. We don't have to come up with anything to prove that Jesus is the author. We don't have to come up with one single thing to prove that Jesus is the author. The Bible does not begin by trying to prove that whether God exists. The Bible simply declares in 
the book of Genesis 1 1 in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The Bible is not a book of arguing, uh, to argue, argue about whether there is a God. No, no, the Bible declares that there is a God. That God is Jesus. He is the creator. Praise God. Hallelujah. Father, base, base my life on that. The Christian, the true Christian faith uh, is based on Christ, based on, on nothing else. It's like the song that we sing uh, on, 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 on Christ, the solid rock I stand. Uh, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. I pray for those right now whose life is not on that foundation. I pray for those who do not know the author, Jesus Christ. I pray right now, dear Lord, that their hearts will be open. Praise God and that they will be saying yes, 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 yes. If you are listening tonight and you do not know the author, Jesus Christ, why don't you say this prayer right now? Heavenly Father, I bow in your presence. Tonight I thank you for the knowledge about Christ, who he is, and what he did. And Christ is the author and the finisher. And I know that I cannot make it to the end without Christ. I cannot make it through those gates without Christ. I will never see that celestial city without Christ. And so I ask forgiveness of my sin, repent of my sin, and I trust in Jesus for salvation. Praise God. Father, I thank you for saving my soul. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. God bless you. God bless you for saying that prayer tonight. Glory to God. Now you know the author. You just live for him. Praise God. He is with you every, every step of the way, every day. Christ will be with you and you will take you through every storm, every storm, every trial, every battle. Praise God. The floods may come, but it will not overcome you. Praise God. You may go through the fire, but you will not be willing. Glory to God. That is the promise that God has given to you. You believe that. You walk in faith and you walk in victory tonight. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. And we want to encourage you this evening. Uh, to tune in again on Wednesday evening for Bible study and uh, prayer meeting and invite people to tune in uh, to the broadcast. Please uh, do send your requests, uh, all right, and also send your praise at the same time. We want to rejoice with you, praise God, and all that God is doing in uh, your life. So you give us a, a shout out, glory to God. So we're going to close uh, uh, this evening uh, just by uh, singing a, a song again. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. We'll enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will sing this is the king. Good night.